We all treat our dogs like they're our babies, and as they grow old, we want to make sure they don't injure themselves. So when asked to build a dog ramp for an aging puppy, I jumped at the opportunity. I was given the dimensions for a custom ramp that would fit the foot of a bed, lightweight and easy to move. So I drew out a simple frame to see how much wood I would need. This is the first time building something like this, so I will show you my mistakes along the way, and you can avoid them while building yours. I decided to start with the top of the ramp and work my way down the ramp. So the first cut was the top of the box, which was 14 inches by 14 inches. Then I cut my first pieces at 29 and a half inches. This would allow my top piece of plywood when joined to make up the rest to give me my total 30 inches. You will need to cut four pieces. Okay, this is how I cheat. I made a mark a quarter of an inch from the edge. Then I took one of my 30 inch pieces and lined it up to that mark. Then I made a corresponding mark on the opposite side of that piece and I did this in all four corners. Then I simply measured those marks to find out the perfect distance of the cross piece. With that measurement, I made my shorter cuts. Again, measure one and then stack the other one you just cut on top of that one so both pieces are identical. From there, you will need to join your pieces together. Now none of these pieces will be seen, so you can simply nail or screw them together. But like always, I take it a bit further and use my pocket jig to drill pockets. Then screw all the pieces together. I also use wood glue, so it will give the corners some extra strength. Is this overkill? Yeah, it is. I know. Remember to use scrap pieces to make sure everything is flush. It was at this point that I realized that my drill did not fit inside the pieces, so I could not continue using the pocket jig. So I will use it where I can, but as for the rest, it will be brads and glue from this point out. Okay, this is not a major mistake, but if you are following along, do not attach the top to your frame yet. When you go to place the fabric on it, it is better if you can wrap it around and attach the fabric to the underside. I was so focused on building this frame I did not think that far ahead. Okay, pretend the top is not on and we will continue from there. Now with your previously cut pieces, join your two squares together. You can use your pocket jig again because in an upright position you can access the pockets. But I decided I would just glue these pieces into position and continue on. Now this next step is optional for you, but the customer wanted a few shelves in the box for storage of puppy things. So the next few steps I will quickly run through. It is much easier to just cover all faces of the box to save both time and money. I took some quick measurements and cut four pieces. Then I took those to the table saw and cut those in half to give me a total of eight. Deciding that I wanted the bottom shelf to be a bit bigger, I made my marks and then tacked each crossbar into place. I used glue on the ends as well. With some very lightweight quarter inch birch plywood, I cut three squares to act as the shelves. Then I notched out each corner with a jigsaw. I did this so there would be no gaps on the base of each shelf once I installed the box. Let me show you how I get such a great fit on my shelves, aka the cheater's way. Instead of taking a bunch of measurements and then drawing out your lines, take a scrap piece and stand it up in each corner of the square. Simply trace around each scrap piece with a pencil and then make your cuts. Make sure you keep the scrap piece aligned in the same direction for each trace. I decided to glue down all the shelves. That is why you see a million clamps right now. I thought that the glue would give the box more strength because to me it felt really light. Okay, call me crazy, but instead of doing the math and relearning the Pythagorean theorem, I decided to cheat again. So check this out. Knowing that the customer wanted the ramp to be exactly 78 inches long so it would fit the foot of his bed, I laid out a tape measure to include the box and set up a speed square at the 78 inch mark. From there, I used a scrap piece, laid it across the cross piece to get the base angle. 
cut it first and then simply have someone help you align the end of your piece with the top face of your piece and then the top of your box. Remember, if you are doing this right, you will need to place back on the top of your box because unlike me, you have not attached it yet. Trace a straight line across your piece and go cut it. With the base piece cut, place it on the deck and hold your piece to the side of the box. Trace your angle and go make your second cut. Once these cuts are made, you can use that piece to cut the second side of the ramp. Lay out your pieces and get a feel for where you want and need support across the top. These are just general spots, so try to make it look like a ladder. Remember that the width is 14 inches, so include your side pieces in the math when making your cuts. For fun, I took the pieces that were cut off the end and I flipped them upside down and attached them to the bottom for extra support. It's not really needed, but since they were already cut and they already have the exact same angle, it doesn't take but a second. At this point everything looks good and you can clearly see that my ladder squares are not all perfectly even. That's okay, no one will ever know. I wanted to make this ramp in two pieces, so instead of just attaching the ramp to the box, I needed to make its own supports. So I held a piece in place, traced out the angles, and cut them to fit. I then went back, joined them together after cutting the very base piece, and added corner joints to the frame, and then joined the entire frame with the top of the ramp together. Okay, we all know my catchphrase. I make this up as I go along. Well, this time, what I had in my head did not work out as I planned. So let me show you my mistake quickly so you can avoid it altogether. In my head, I thought that a good way to join the ramp to the box and allow it to hook and unhook for transport would be to use the headboard technique I used when building my headboard for my son's bedroom. In theory, this should work great, but in the end, it became too difficult and did not work exactly as I had hoped. So to avoid frustration and see the better way I join these two pieces together, skip this step altogether. So the better way I came up with was using dowels. We will start by placing two boards flush across the back of the box. We will drill pilot holes and secure them with both wood glue and screws. This will allow them to be a bit stronger and take on the extra wear and tear when taking apart and putting the box back together. Very important here, don't skip the pilot holes. Check the length of your drill bit to make sure it is the same length as the screw. Then drill your pilot holes. We don't want to split any of the soft pine at this point and the screws with the wood glue will be more than enough to hold these pieces in place. So here is also a quick trick you can use on pine because the wood is so soft. When you change out your drill bit, instead of changing it out for a countersink drill bit, you can actually use the screw tip. It will give you the perfect shape for a screw head and not go any deeper than you can actually press into the pine. But you will need the countersink holes because the screws can end up obstructing the covers on the sides when we place them. Now take your box and lay it face down with the brackets facing upwards. Take your ramp and lay it on top of the back of the box. Then clamp it into position so it does not move. This way our corresponding brackets on the ramp can be perfectly aligned to the box brackets and no measuring needed. We will now repeat the exact same steps for the ramp that we just used on the box. Cut your pieces, drill your pilot holes, countersink, and screw and glue your pieces into place. Okay, here is a plug for my DeWalt workshop stool. If you have a bad back or bad knees like me, then this is ideal for you. My wife got me this stool for Father's Day, but it actually looks like I am having a little too much fun rolling around and using this, so I thought I would leave it in the video. Check the description if you're interested in this tool. Without unclamping the ramp from the box, take a spade bit that is the same circumference as your dowel and drill two holes in each bracket for a total of four holes. Drill these about two or three inches from each side. Drill all the way through both brackets. Take your dowel and measure out four pieces at about two inches each. Then cut them off. On one 
end of each of your cut pieces, take some sandpaper and round the end into a curved head. This will make it easier when trying to get the dowel head to slide into the bracket hole. Take your cut pieces and glue them and place them into the holes on the back of the box. The dowel should be facing outward. Push them down so the bottom is flush with the other side of the bracket. Here I use a small board to make sure I don't go too far down. Now you can press your ramp onto the dowels and everything should be aligned and you will have a tight fit between your ramp and shelves. Drill your pilot holes for your retaining screws. Make sure you do not drill all the way through the lower bracket. You don't want any screw heads sticking out inside the shelved area where someone could poke their hand. Okay, let's fill in the shelves. I get a lot of comments when I mention tips and tricks that I use that people don't know. So here is one that you might have overlooked. At the bottom of each tape measure, it will say the size of the base of the tape measure. This one says 2 inches. So why is this important? Well, when you're trying to get an exact measurement, say like in the inside of this box where it's almost impossible to bend the tape measure correctly, you can take the tape measure and extend the tape out and butt the back of the tape measure up against the box. Then take the measurement. Add your 2 inches for your exact mark. So the tape extended here shows exactly 9 inches. I got lucky right on the mark. And then I just add the 2 inches of the tape measure for an 11 inch cut. And with that tip, I can manage a perfectly tight fit. Oh yeah, one more thing. If you're like me and can't remember the measurement without writing it down when you walk to the table saw, then simply don't move your tape measure when setting up your table saw. Lay your tape measure up against the blade and slide your fence to meet the end of the tape. It works here too. Okay, watch me freak out and not understand why all of a sudden my dowels don't align. Knucklehead, it's upside down. And you knew I wouldn't edit that out. For this next step, we need to join the box and the ramp by screwing them together. I'm going to use some white Wayne Scott panel. This is already white, so I won't have to paint it. This stuff is paintable, so if you want to go with another color, that's just fine. But I just love the beaded lines. So let's start by laying the box on its side and covering the shelf box. Take your measurements and then cut the panel on the table saw. I will quickly tack them into position. Lay your pieces and ensure everything is flush and tight with the first piece you put down on the shelf box. Then, with a pencil, mark the back side using the angle of the ramp frame. Then, cut your piece. Continue on until the entire face is covered. Then you can flip your box over and repeat on the other side. Let's start on the ramp top. Get yourself some fabric padding. This will help the dog's feet sink in and get a better grip on the ramp as they run up and down. I spray some 3M adhesive on the top of the shelf box. Then I lay my padding directly to it. Then after a few minutes, I simply trim away the excess. For the ramp top, you can use one full piece of plywood. I didn't have that, so I used two pieces and joined them together. I measured the top of the ramp, cut my pieces, and then used biscuit joints and glue to piece them together. I only did this to make covering with fabric easier. I need to cover the top of the shelf box first. If you followed my directions and did not attach the top to the box, then this step will be much easier for you. But cut your fabric to fit and then pull it over to the back side and staple down. I will have to staple to the sides and cover with trim, so an extra step for me. So with the top of the ramp, we will repeat the exact same steps. Spray your adhesive on the face of the ramp. Lay out your padding and this time trim your padding so you have enough excess to cover the sides. I used a piece of scrap wood that gave me a perfect half inch all the way around the ramp. Next, lay your ramp on the fabric and then pull it around tight and staple down. If your staples are not flush, tap them down with a hammer. Now let's attach the ramp top. 
place into position and make sure the ramp is flush with the shelf box. Then take a clamp and just hold it in position. Now, drill some pilot holes through the ramp frame cross supports. It's very important to make sure you don't drill beyond the top of the box at all. And make sure your screws are short screws and will not even slightly protrude through the base of the ramp. Last thing you want is your puppy to step on a screw head. Finish by screwing in the ramp frame to the ramp top. Before we do this last step, we need to take the box back apart. Unscrew the fastener screws next to the dowel pins on the inside of the box and remove the ramp from the shelves. The very last step is to place the trim on the box. This part is optional for you because I had placed my shelf box top on too early. I need to do this to cover my fabric staples. So here I put trim around the top of the shelf box and then since I had more than enough to complete the ramp, I did the ramp and the face of the shelf box too. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe and notifications button, and I would love to hear your comments below. Let me know if this is something that could benefit your dog. 